So here's theorem 2.14, which is on vertical asymptotes. It says, let f and g be continuous on an open interval containing c. If f of c is not equal to zero, g of c is equal to zero, then there exists an open interval containing c such that g of x is not equal to zero. For all x not equal to c in the interval, then the graph of the function h of x equals f of x all over g of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals c. What in the heck did that just say? It just made a simple concept way more difficult because they had to give the formal mathematical definition of it. Here's what I want you guys to do. I wrote these notes up for you. These are not in the book. To find vertical asymptotes of a rational function, okay? The first question is usually what's the domain or what is the intervals of continuity? For the domain or the intervals of continuities, the first thing you do is set the denominator equal to zero and solve, because that's when the function's undefined, whenever the denominator is equal to zero. But for vertical asymptotes, it's very, very important that you do this first. For domain and continuity, you never simplify first. But for vertical asymptotes, for vertical asymptotes, you are always going to factor and simplify first, okay? So really, really different than domain and continuity. Again, domain and continu continuity never simplify. Just set the denominator equal to zero. For vertical asymptotes, you have to simplify. So factor first, set the denominator equal to zero, and then make sure your answer is x equals c for each of those values. You have to write it as x equals c because it is a line. <coughs> Looking at this next example, example two, again, you can see an interactive version of this if you download this content right here and open up the player. Again, you could also just go to um, desmos.com and graph these yourself to see what they look like. Okay, but here's just finding the vertical asymptotes. Well, the first thing you need to do is try to factor and simplify. Look at this first example on h of x equals 1 over 2 times the quantity x plus 1. There is no factoring, there is no simplifying. So all we know is this bottom here cannot equal zero, or it doesn't matter if we say cannot equal zero or set it equal to zero. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by two. And I'd have x plus one equals zero because zero divided by two is two, or sorry, zero divided by two is zero. I subtract one from both sides and I end up with x equals negative one. So that would be our vertical asymptote. Notice I do have to write x equals, okay? That's my vertical asymptote. I highly encourage that you go ahead and graph that. And what you'll see when you look at this is you'll see a graph at x equals negative one. And then your function will either approach infinity or negative infinity on either of those sides or even both of those sides. So I don't know the exact picture of it. I encourage you to look at it to visually see that yes, this is indeed a vertical asymptote. Okay, so let's look at the next one, h of x. Well, the first thing you always want to do for vertical asymptotes is try to factor and simplify. Well, the numerator x squared plus 1 is a sum of squares and does not factor and simplify. But the denominator is a difference of squares, factors into x plus 1 and x minus 1. So x squared minus 1 factors into x plus 1 and x minus 1. Again, since it doesn't factor and simplify any further, all we do is set the denominator equal to 0. This is going to set each factor equal to zero. So we set x plus one equals to zero and x minus one equals to zero. Subtract one from both sides would give us x equals negative one. Add one to both sides would give us x equals one. These are two separate vertical asymptotes. They both need to be written down as x equals. You absolutely cannot write, do not write, let me write this, do not write, x equals negative one comma one. That is absolutely wrong to do, okay? because that shows that those, those are x values as a number. And this isn't a number, this is the equation of a line. All right, let's look at the next one. Think about cotangent of x. Well, what is cotangent of x? Isn't cotangent of x the same thing as cosine of x over sine of x? Hopefully you agree with that, cosine of x over sine of x. There's no factoring and simplifying here, but what we need is when is the denominator equal to zero. So let's think about when is sine of x equal to zero? Well, sine of x is equal to zero, thinking about that unit circle, when are the y values equal to zero on the unit circle? Well, that would be at zero, at pi, at two pi, so on. And we could also go backwards, right? So that'd be at negative pi, negative two pi, and so on backwards. 
So it looks like every multiple of pi is where we would have a vertical asymptote. So how can I write this? I would just write at x equals k pi at every integer value of pi where k is an integer. Okay. So those are the values when sine of x is equal to zero and sine of x equals zero would be the denominator of cotangent making cotangent undefined. So anytime you're looking for a vertical asymptote, try to factor and simplify first, then set the denominator equal to zero.